Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tommy Callen Field as uh, we're about set to uh, play some third region baseball between the Hancock County Hornets and the uh, Red Devils of Owensboro High School. Um, before we get things going, we're going to read off the starting lineups. Batting first for the Red Devils, Griffin Hare. Batting second, playing right field, Braxton French. Batting third, being the DH tonight, will be uh, Nick Belcher. Batting fourth, Collar Higgs. Batting fifth, Isaac Humphrey. Batting sixth at third base, Dakota Duell. Doing the uh, catching tonight will be Blakely McAllister. Playing first base, Brennan Williams. And batting ninth, Tucker Hagan. And in left field, um, where the DH will be uh, hitting for him, is Eric Epperson. Tonight I'm alongside Brennan Roberts. Uh, Tyler is still on an off day. I believe Tyler will come in here tomorrow and do the game with me for senior night. So, uh, Brendan, it's good to have you. Thanks, sir. As we are about set to get uh, things started, Parker Newby will be on the mound tonight for the Hornets. And uh, looks like we got a new face over there on second. I want to see this lineup. Dylan O'Brien will be playing second. So I'll go ahead and read off the uh, starting lineup for the Hornets. Batting first, playing center field, Tanner Singleton. Batting second, playing third base, Jacob White. Batting third and right field, Cameron White. Batting fourth, Lathan Lamar, batting fifth, Corey Axton, followed by Andrew Hagman. Batting seventh will be Andrew Bloom in left field. Batting eighth, Cody Axton. And at shortstop, batting ninth, Cole Dixon. As we get the play ball sign from Clay Herndon behind the plate doing the umpiring tonight. First pitch will be ball in the dirt. Start to count one and zero. Second pitch will be foul tip into the <laughs> glove of Corey Axton. <laughs> yeah, something happened to my. Phone. I guess Siri thought maybe I said her name. I'm not really sure. As ground ball hit to Jacob White, Jacob White sets, fires, and nice play by Jacob White. That was a good play. Now it's always good to have Jacob White there on third. Uh, you, as a pitcher, you can always trust that if the ball's hit down the. Yeah, he's a good player. He's a good ball player. Third base to Jacob White. Chances are he's going to make the play, and he made that one look easy as he had a short hop that was hit pretty hard. And Jacob White makes the play. And we got one out here in the top half of the first. So good work by Parker Newby to get him a ground ball. Steps start in. The inning. Good yep. start to the inning. Steps in Braxton French as he's going to try and lay a bunt down third baseline, and he's going to pop that up foul. So maybe Braxton's going to try and steal a base hit. Thought maybe Jacob White was playing a little deep. Maybe he could sneak in a base hit. So I'm not sure if we'll see that again as the count is 0-2. 0-1. 0-1, I'm sorry. Curve There's O2. Nice curveball of uh, Parker Newby. And drops right into the strike zone. And the O2 is going to be a ball in the dirt. Looks like he tried to keep that low for him. Nothing good to hit. Yeah, that was good pitch by Parker. As I've pitched to Braxton plenty of times, and he almost – Left he yard on this field against me. He can hit. So he can hit. So Good pitch by Parker as he brings the 1-2, and it's going to be a base hit right at the middle. So, I mean, with two strikes, Braxton Prince gets him a base hit, and we got one aboard here in the top half of the first. As Nick Belcher steps into the plate for the Red Devils. And that'll be a check swing strike one. As he wasn't really sure if he could make up his mind whether he was going to swing that or not. As Parker went some high heat up and away. And he brings the L1, and it's almost the same pitch, and Braxton is going to try and get a stolen base, and he will as uh, Corey throws the ball down to Dylan O'Brien. and Dylan O'Brien was not ready for it. He was not even on second base. So uh, 
That's stolen base for Brexton French, and we got a runner on second as um, the Hornets have one out here in the top half of the first. 1-1 one, one to Belcher. Strike called on the lower outside part of the plate. Painting the corners. It's always a good thing to have. Yep. It's one thing I was never really good at. My only way I threw a whole lot of strikes was if I could possibly get a bomb. Hitting spots was definitely not my thing. As a pitcher, that's a very, very important. As Parker battles back in the count, 2-2. Two -two. And here it is, and it's going to be a ball hit to Cole Dixon on shortstop. Throws it. He's out. Braxton's going to try and take third as it's uh So what kind of happened there was Cole Dixon came in, made the play at shortstop, threw it to Lathan. Lathan, seeing Braxton run into third, tried to throw him out at third, and that was just a tough play with Braxton's speed. He made it in time. And Jacob White kind of had to pick that ball out of the dirt. So Cole good. did make a good play at short, yeah. though. That was a good play. Yep. Kept his head through the ball. Every, every game it. I've done, I've always been impressed with Cole. He, he has impressed me as well. You know, he makes good plays over there. As a ball that's hit to Dylan O'Brien on second base, throws him out. So uh, with the base hit that got aboard, didn't get the score. So good job by Parker and the Hornets letting his defense work. And we're going to bring the uh, bottom half of the first after this break, this third region sports network. As we are back from Tommy County Field, as uh, Parker Newby had him a base runner on with one out and throws him a couple ground balls to get out of the inning. So good job by Parker. So here steps in uh, number two, Tanner Singleton for the Hornets to do uh, start this order off tonight. So see what Tanner can do on his first at bat of the night and he's going to draw a ball inside part of the plate. And ball outside so he sees a ball inside, ball outside. 2-0 to Tanner Singleton. Jacob White in the hole. They're on deck, I'm sorry. Jacob White's on deck followed by uh, I believe Cameron White is in the hole. 3-0 to Tanner. And here is 3-0. All four. So four-pitch walk. Start the inning for the Hornets. Did his job as a leadoff. Got on base. Yeah, that's always a good thing. Not a good thing for the Red Devils because if you walk a leadoff batter most of the time, that usually doesn't end well. So... We'll see if the Hornets can take advantage as they got a first batter on base. So steps in, Jacob White. See, lays on the first pitch he sees and fouls it back. Being aggressive, straight into the box. I've seen Jacob White do that a lot this season. He doesn't waste. Anytime he steps in and he seems to know what pitch he wants. And his numbers can definitely show for it. So the 0 1 is up. And 
the one one. Pitcher's gonna check over on Tanner Singleton at first. Tanner slides back in safe. As Jacob White's batting four forty two on the season. That is uh definitely some good numbers to put up in the senior season. Definitely. Tanner's getting a lot of attention over there on first. Probably we'll, we'll worried about him taking second. And the 1-1, one, one, and Tanner does not take off. Brings the count 2-1 to Jacob White. And I apologize, folks. I'm very not very good at keeping up with this scoreboard, so bear with me. I get ball watching too much. The 2-1 right down the plate. This Jacob White might have missed his opportunity on that pitch. But he's a very good two-strike hitter. He'll shorten up. See if he can find a hole. Somehow move Tanner over to second. And he, uh, as soon as I say that, he swings at the first pitch that he sees right after the 2-2. And that'll be a strikeout. So um, in steps in Cameron White. That was only uh, the ninth strikeout for Jacob White on the season. First pitch, Cameron White fell back. Oh, one check on Tanner again. Tanner's getting a lot of work over there. Yeah, <laughs> Doing a good job keeping the pitcher's attention on him. And that was always the thing for me. As Tanner takes off on the pitch, called a strike to Cameron White, and he'll uh, pick up stolen base. So, man, that field you dry. Yeah. Look at all that dust. It's a hot day out here today. Yes, it's been very hot. So, two strikes, no balls on Cameron White. Runner on second base is uh, Tanner slid in safely. So ball hit up to the shortstop. Shortstop makes a play. Throws Cameron White out. But moves uh, Tanner There's Singleton the over to third. third. So we will see if uh, the Hornets can take take advantage of that uh, first at bat walk. So as I mentioned earlier, sometimes that leadoff walk can always find a way to haunt you. A good percent of the time they'll end up finding their way home. But uh, we got two outs with Lathan Lamar. Definitely a power hitter here at the plate. He's going to take uh ball inside. Ball inside, you know. I was trying to figure out what kind of pitch that was. Almost seemed like a changeup. Possibly change up on inside corner. Didn't get the call. The ball gets away from the catcher, and Tanner's going to come in. There's going to be a play at the plate, and he is going to be called out. Tanner thought maybe he got in under it, but... uh. Clay Herndon at the play didn't think so. So uh, we'll bring the top half of the second to you after we take this break. This is Third Region Sports Network. back for Tommy County Field as uh, the Hornets could not take advantage of the leadoff walk as Tanner Singleton tried to come home on a pass ball and called out at the plate as I drop all the change in my pocket. <laughs> so we'll see if uh, 
Parker Newby can have an inning like he did the first inning. Really uses the defense, threw a lot of ground balls. Some good work by Parker. Definitely good to see for Coach Mosby and the coaching staff because that's something something that's good for Parker is playing with him. Sometimes he kind of struggles with some confidence. So it's really good to see him have a first outing, his yeah, first innings. So. When he gets his confidence, he's he's a good pitcher. He is a very good pitcher. He'll start painting corners. As Isaac Humphrey steps in, I feel like this kid's been playing for a long time. As Parker throws the first pitch strike on the fastball. Yeah, definitely good to see Parker starting to hit on his batters. It's about a ball. Mm, he's a As he drops a nice breaking ball right into the strike zone, out at the very top of the strike zone. Yo two is fouled down third baseline. And the O two to Humphrey. Going to be a fly ball in the infield and late Lathan Mar steps it. over. Infield fly to start the inning, that's always a good start. Good job, uh Parker and the Hornets again. It's good to always start an inning with an out. And it's a Dakota Duel steps in. That's another one that I feel like has been on this team for a very long time. He is a power hitter, too. So we'll see how uh, Parker handles him as we got lefty on lefty matchup. Dakota Duel takes a big swing right through maybe a changeup. Is that a changeup? Yeah, ho yeah, hopefully Parker will work him outside because he will pull the ball. It seems that's what he's doing. Starts out the count 0-2. With one out here in the top half of the second. The 0-2 to duel. And breaking ball in the dirt. And 1-2. Fell back. Yeah, as a left-handed hitter, I always hated facing a left-handed pitcher. Yep, I, I remember you always <laughs> didn't look forward to seeing those lefties on the scorecard right before the game. No. One, two to duel. Ground Chuck ball. ground ball to second baseman. That's a good play. Don O'Brien leaps over, throws him. So good work by Parker in the Hornets defense. He is working good. As we got two outs, two quick outs. Here in the top half of the second. As Parker seems to be really relaxed up there, not trying to do too much, realizes that he doesn't have to do it all himself. And That's good. He's throwing him a couple fly balls, a couple ground balls, and he's looking really good up there. I played Legion ball with Blakely, who's up to bat now. He's a, he's a pretty good hitter as well. He sticks first pitch up and away. I don't know a lot about this kid, but I'll definitely take your word for it. It's, there's a, seems to be a lot of good hitters on this Swansboro team. As a uh, ball that's hit to Cole Dixon, he goes to the backhand and can't make the play, and the ball uh, rolls into left field. So Cole Dixon tried to work that backhand. That's a difficult play to make. It, it, yeah, backhand is always difficult. Um, you really got to see it into your glove. And I think, yeah, I think that's what he didn't do. He just kind of lifted up too fast and let the let the ball get in his glove all the way. So we got one aboard here for the Red Devils after an error by Cole Dixon on shortstop. Steps in another lefty. And first pitch ball in the dirt. Blocked that well. As Corey Exon has, he's worked hard all these games that I've called. He. Corey is a good catcher. Definitely good to have him back for the Hornets. He's he's definitely uh He really, he moves well behind the plate blocking yeah. balls. Very knowledgeable, knows all the situations. It's second pitch to number one is fell back. This is Brennan Williams. Brennan Williams, left handed batter, batting in the eight hole tonight.
two outs here in the second inning. One run aboard. So that's a nice that's breaking like, ball. That's a good breaking ball. Yeah, nice breaking ball. But Parker Newby to get Williams swinging. One, two, two outs. That that is one thing that's really hard as a left-handed hitcher, pit, or as a hitter, reading a left-handed curveball. It's it's difficult. One, two. He's gonna go back to the same pitch, and that's gonna be a bouncer over to second base. Dylan O'Brien covers, makes the play, and Another that's good all. Another good inning by the Hornets. Another good inning by the Hornets. Yep. Good job of Parker getting him some ground balls, and uh, I'll bring the bottom half of the second. This third region sports network. Back up with the Hornets up to bat here. I think we'll uh, start out with Lathan back hitting after the play at home last inning with Tanner. Important to get another uh, leadoff hitter on. Yeah, the leadoff man on is nothing wrong with that. If you can get a leadoff man, you give your you give offense a chance. A you chance. Give a chance. Definitely. And that just uh, creates momentum going through the rest of the lineup. So, first pitch fouled back so as we are underway here in the bottom half of the second inning. No one liked and he's probably looking for an inside pitch if he can get one. The one's breaking ball that did not break, stays up in the zone. And Lathan lays off. Lay, that was a good look. That was a yep. good look. As he smokes one down, they took a hold of duel. He makes a great diving play. It's going to be a foot race, and he's called out. That was a good hit, taking it opposite yep. field. Definitely took uh, the pitch where it was hit. Dakota Duel just made a great play. That was a good play. Diving to his right. Oh, Brennan Williams. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dakota Duel is on third base tonight. Brennan Williams, so. Good play by number one, first base, dive in and beat Lathan Lamar. So, good play by the Red Devils. Steps in Corey Axon as he uh, looks at first pitch ball up and away. The one ones, a chopper, hit the uh, pitcher. Pitcher rolls to his right like a quarterback almost and throws. <laughs> That was Corey X now. So two quick outs here for the Red Devils. So just like the Hornets, this pitcher is Working using good. his He's defense. Starting to work it as well. He uses himself, fills his position, makes a nice play. So that's where uh, PFPs coming in. Yeah, PFPs. Nothing that can uh, be taken for granted. So is this Andrew Hagman? Did he uh, change his walk-up song? I think he's changed it three times now. Hmm. Can't seem to. Figure out, Find what, he out what he wants. <laughs> I guess not the Walmart yodeling kid. <laughs> that ship has sailed. No one has fouled back. Quick o, <laughs> quick o two count to Andrew Hagman. I'll never forget that. That first time I heard his walk up, I <laughs> I could keep it together almost. The o two breaking ball. So uh, good job by Andrew Hagman. To stay back. back. Yep. And he drove it. Long drive. And as a pitcher, you hate that. Yeah, that's the worst. O two. Throwing an O two base hit is base hit. It's worst. Usually, you want to work either uh, down or up, something that's not really hittable, and hopefully get someone to swing at it. Yep, and he had a breaking ball. He had the right pitch. It just it did, it stayed it up in the zone. Yep, stayed didn't up execute in the zone. it. So, working that down more 
might get a hit or a swing at it. Steps in Andrew Bloom as he looks at first pitch ball on the outside corner. It was very close. That was close. But Clay Herndon seems to know what he likes, and I haven't seen any pitches I that any I've been. Well, as a pitcher tries to barehand a ball that is hit up to the middle by Andrew Bloom, and that'll be a fielder's choice. Play to yep. Tag second. Was that the shortstop? It was. Okay, so we'll uh, be back with the top half of the third. Zero zero. This is the Region Sports Network. Set to start the third inning, as it's uh, been a good job by the pitchers tonight. This is a pitching game. So far, the pitchers have pitched well. Not a whole lot of strikeouts. I don't even know if we've recorded one strikeout for the Red Devils. I know we got one here for the Hornets. As Jacob White struck out for the, for the Hornets after uh, I think he got a, a walk by Tanner Singleton. A little too aggressive. Yeah, was looking for something. To yeah, he definitely Especially swung at a pitch that was out of the zone. I think he was just trying to drive Tanner around. But either way, definitely some good work by the pitchers tonight. Have they using used their defense? Use using the defense. Their defenses. Yep. Which both of these teams are pretty good. Steps in Tucker Hagen. Number twenty two, batting in the nine hole tonight for the Red Devils. First pitch. He fouled down right field line out of play. So again. Park Newby starting, starting on top. Ahead. Starting ahead. As he builds confidence, he turns into a pretty dominant pitcher. Yeah, he's he's definitely one of those where if his head is in it, then he can definitely pitch well. I was always one of those myself. Sometimes I let the moment get the best of me. And confidence is a lot, though. It is, and it's important for pitchers to realize it. They don't always have to do it all. Trust your teammates. Trust them to make plays. Get them ground balls. As Parker is falling behind in the count, 2-1. The 2-1. Just, Just missed the outside corner. Yep. So after getting first pitch, uh, strike. Parker's throwing three straight balls and a ball that's going to be lifted. And, uh, Tanner makes a play. Yeah, right center field. Cameron White came over to make the play. Tanner Singleton from center field said he had a better angle at it. Called Cameron off, makes the play. So That is easier for Tanner to make that play because yeah. it's his glove hand on definitely, that side yeah, as well. Definitely better. Instead of reaching across your body. Yep. That was a good call by Tanner. Mm-hmm. Cameron White had to cover a lot of ground if he was going to make that play. Both of he them. came only, yeah. He came that was right way. in the gap. First pitch to the leadoff batter. Fouled back down the third baseline. As Parker again starts 0 1. Last at batter. Fell behind after he started 0 1 and gets a, a fly ball to the outfield. So we'll see what happens here. The 0 1 is a freaking ball in the dirt. And the 1-1 one, one with one out. Ball inside. Mm -hmm. 
and the 2-1 fell back. Parker's battling to stay in this count. He got a 2-2 count with one out. This Parker seems to be pretty relaxed. It's a big pitch right here in this at bat. 2-2 two is going to be a line base hit in the left field. A line drive right over the infield, and Red Devils found a, found a runner on here with one out in the top half of the third. Braxton French steps in. Still a tied ball game here in Tommy County Field, tied at zeros. Horns tried to take the lead in the first inning as um, Tanner Singleton was called out at the plate. As he tried to score on pass ball. Got to like that, the aggressiveness early, yep, though. Yeah, that ended the inning, but Tanner definitely thought that he had a chance to score. As a ball, that's going to be uh, fair down the first baseline. Braxton French is going to have a uh, have a double, so moves the runner over from first to third. Will hit ball by Saw Braxton ball French. To field too. That was a lace down the first baseline, so. Good job, uh, Braxton French. It's a hard ball in the field. Definitely. Cameron made Cameron White made a good throw in to second. Yeah, Hold good job, runner. good Hold job the by the Hornets. Third. Yeah, because definitely, I thought when that ball was hit, uh, one for sure was going to be scored. With Braxton's it. speed, uh, looked like I, if the ball got down to the wall, who knows? He might have been coming home. Yeah, good job um, by Cameron so, White yeah, took the ball in. Good job by Cameron White took a good angle and keeps her on at third, but we're going to have a base hit. No, a uh, play that's made by Dylan O'Brien. That was a good play. A line drive that was hit almost right up the middle. Dylan O'Brien shades to his right, makes a diving catch to save two runs. Almost got a double play, too. I don't, yeah, almost doubled Braxton French up at uh, second base. Wow. Good play by Dylan O'Brien to save two runs, and that's definitely a big sigh of relief for Parker Newby. So good job by the second baseman. So we got runners on second and third. The first pitch is fouled back. And Parker starts ahead. So we'll see if the Hornets can get out of this early uh, third inning jam. <laughs> and the 0 1. Ball, Ball up and up in. And One one up and in. BP, you remember uh, last time we played these guys at home? No, I do. We got uh, be oh, pretty yeah. handily. Yeah, I do remember that. Actually. I can't remember the score, but it's probably a good thing that I don't because it was not good. It was not a good game at all. Three one, as we still got runners on second and third, and Parker's kind of seemed to pick up the pace a little bit here on the mound. With really no reason to. I mean, he's thrown well. His defense has obviously showed that they can make plays. There's a ball that's lifted into right field. Cameron White seems to be under it, and he does. So great job by the Hornets. Get out of that inning. Got out of the inning. Definitely could have been uh, two runs at least by the Red Devils. Turns into zero. So we're still tied at zeros. We're going to go into the bottom half of the third. This is the third region, Sports Network. As we're back from Tommy County Field, 
Good job by the Hornets in that top half of the inning to get out of some some trouble by the Red Devils as they had two on with only one out and Parker Newby and the Hornets work out of the jam, so wasn't uh Parker getting DH for before? I'm not sure. The lineup says Cody Exton should be So, yeah, I guess he's hitting for Dylan. So, as we were kind of confused up here in the press box, it seems to be that Parker Newby is batting for Dylan O'Brien playing second base. As he laces one right up the middle, hits the top part of the mound, and bounces into center field. He's getting so, hit Parker's Parker. pitching well tonight, and he gets a base hit right at the middle. So Playing with Parker, he can he can hit the ball, too. If he gets one he wants, he can, uh, he can hit the ball hard. And he does there. Hit it right up the middle as we have a courtesy runner. I remember at practice he sent one over the right field fence. That's great. I mean, uh, that's a tough pitch to hit out because, I mean, it's 320 in right field. I never could. I never hit one. I Le over the left field, well, I never hit a home run at all. I've said that multiple times here on third region. Was Parker going to take off after the – That was a Wyatt pinch run in Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, that was Wyatt Baker. That was, a, he, it was a good read, too, because mm -hmm. he was going out of the windup. Yeah, that so was good. Good. good base running. Good heads up play by Wyatt Baker. I'm sorry, I didn't even. I just realized that he was uh, courtesy running, and I said Parker just took that base, but that was Wyatt Baker. So we got a runner on second for the Hornets with no outs, two balls, and no strikes to uh, Cole, Cole Dixon. Cole Dixon takes the 2-0, swings right through it. So 2-1 to Cole Dixon with no outs here in the bottom half of the third is the top half of this order is on deck. 2-1 outside. Ball outside, yep. One thing about Wyatt is he's always a really smart base runner. He's definitely been around the game his entire life, and that always helps. Good IQ for the game is He's Cole Dixon. He's good on the base Dixon. path. Yep. Cole, Cole Dixon takes a, a 3-1 right on the inside part of the plate. So now we got a full count here. No out runner on second. Three two. Gonna be a line drive that bounces right in front of the second baseman. Second baseman gathers himself, throws and he out. And did his job as yep, well. Throws out the ball Dixon, opposite so. field to move a runner to third. So good job by the seventh grader with. A full count. Just not do too much. Do his job. And do his job. Take it opposite field with that runner on second. Move him to third. That's what you always want to do as a hitter. It's a good job by Cole as Tanner Singleton steps in with a chance to pick up an RBI here in the bottom half of the third and break this 0 0 tie. First pitch to Tanner is fouled back. And uh, Owensboro seems to be playing with their infield in, hopefully trying to stop a runner from going home on a ground ball. Which, I mean, this isn't a terrible call. You don't have a runner on. You don't have a runner on first. So, I mean, uh, I guess you don't have to pinch in at second base. But, I mean, it's definitely the third inning. I mean, it's not like it's the fifth, sixth, or seventh. Um, but I guess maybe they just might as well take their chances and. Any time to stop a run, too, is always what and you want to do. I believe that's what they're thinking. But as the 0 2 is a breaking ball that almost fell into the strike zone. Tanner thought maybe it was as he leaned into it, but got bailed out by Clay Herndon. So 1 2 with one out. And here's the pitch. Foul back. Another foul ball. He's battling. Lays off the breaking ball, huh? Mm -hmm. Another breaking ball that didn't break. This pitcher kind of ran in in some trouble last time he did that. But that one was well out of the zone. It's not a bad pitch either with a 1-2. You're still ahead in the count. 2-2. Two, two. So after falling behind 0-2, oh, Tanner Singleton has fought his way back into this count. Full count. 
finds himself looking at a 3-2 pitch coming up. You're always, you're still looking for a strike here. Yeah, pitcher's definitely going to try and come right at him, but he doesn't. He misses up and away by quite a bit. Got uh, runners on the corners. So runners on the corners. With a very good hitter up to bat, so hopefully uh, we can get something done here. This talk with the catcher and pitcher isn't anything but just to possibly settle him down. As Probably he's pitched, time you're doing good. As he's pitched well it's all a night good long. Game. Held the Hornets to just two hits. And that's, some, that's something to brag about because these Hornets definitely can they swing can the, the bat. Ball. They can hit the ball. So, we'll see what Jacob White can do after his first at bat. Struck out swinging. He's got runners on the corners. And Tanner Singleton takes off and Jacob White fouls it back. Oh, one. The O one Tanner takes off. A fake throw by the catcher. So, Jacob White's in a position to pick up two RBIs as he's got both runners in scoring position. No two count. And no two count, so. One thing that's difficult for Jacob is Griffin played Legion ball with him as well, which is their pitcher, so he knows what Jacob likes and stuff like that. It was a catcher, catcher calls call, time. Yeah, out. catcher call time there. I think he had dirt in his glove or something. But yeah, it's always good as a pitcher to know some oh, players sure. on other I mean, teams and what they like and stuff like that. It always helps. As Jacob White swings at the 0-2 and fouls it just enough to give, give himself, himself at another alive. pitch. He'll have to keep battling here to keep himself alive until he gets a pitch he likes. And with the 0-2 count to Jacob White, I'm sure that he's not going to see anything that he can hit. Maybe stuff out of the zone like that. Especially if you said that these two have played together. He definitely knows that Jacob's got good abilities at the plate. Which Owensboro's coach was also our coach of the Legion team as well. So definitely knows him. The one two. Ball that goes right back to the catcher is it was a wild pitch. I'm not even sure if the catcher got a glove on. I don't think he did. And it hit the backstop and came right, right back, back to the catcher. To So the Red Devils catch a break there. That is one thing about the backstop here. It, it can come off hard, or yep. sometimes it'll just set right on it. If you hit that pad like that, I mean, it's it's going to come back, and that's what it did there. So two balls and two strikes to Jacob White as he looks, looks at a pitch up. up. So uh, starting 0-2, works himself back to a full yep. count again, just like Tanner did. Now he's in a good position to uh, get a pitch he might yeah, be able to drive bit, somewhere. Yep. He can definitely see a pitch he likes here. And he takes a ball high. So we got uh, bases loaded here. It's Cameron White up. One out. And we're going to have a uh, talk on the mound. Coach is probably going to come tell him he needs to, you know, calm down. Mm -hmm. It's still early in the game, too. So he doesn't need to worry about anything. I mean, his team's got a score to win anyway, you know. Yep. So definitely. And uh, this one's world team can hit. They can hit. So exactly. And all due respect to Cameron White, as he's got a lot of power, but one ground ball can get you out of this inning with a double play. Definitely, definitely. So as a, as a so pitcher, it's it. difficult in a full with a bases loaded. You always get a little anxious, but. When you're in the third inning, you got plenty of, you plenty outs of to work left. with. So plenty of innings left. Like you said, one pitch can get him out of this inning. So we'll see what happens. This we're set, ready to go again. Oh, the huddle is broken, and we get the play ball signal from Clay Herndon. 
Bases loaded, one out. Cameron White looks at uh, first pitch ball outside part of the plate. Probably not going to try and give him anything to hit now well that, either. Right. And that was a ball, but it seems to be that Clay Herndon has a pretty tight strike zone. Definitely is a good thing as um, Cameron White, 5-4. Oh. Jacob White breaks up the breaks double up play. The double play. That was a good, good smart play by Jacob White. Because I couldn't, I couldn't necessarily call that out. Couldn't get it out of my mouth quick enough. <laughs> so the Hornets do get a run through. No, nope, it looks like they're going to call Jacob White out as interference, I guess. Interference and maybe he done too much over there on second base. So maybe he slid through the base too far. So uh, we're going to take a break. It's the Region Sports Network. So uh, after that interference call on Jacob White, we'll start at the top of the fourth with uh, the score still 0 0. As uh, the leadoff hitter pops one up in the right field and Cameron White makes a play on it. Another good start for Parker Newby starting off the inning. Um, ahead with an out. That brings back up Dakota Duel. A good power hitter for the Red Devils. First pitch is a ball, probably a little up and out. Now I was down at the press box, and that ball coming off the bat sounded like it might have been out of here as Dakota Dole hits one. That ball hit hard, too. Right to Tanner, so. But like I said, Dakota, he, he has power. He, he hits the ball hard. That time just right to a player. Both those balls are hit hard. Humphrey just or Humphrey just kind of seemed to get under it a little bit. Like I said, this OHS team can't hit the ball. This Parker's first pitch is a little low. One out, called strike. Parker trying to work the zone here. 
Yep. I think that one hit uh hit uh, Corey on the arm or something when it came in. He dropped a block it. And Corey's pretty tough, so I mean if he's in seems to be in pain, he's mm, Oh, I think it was a side. Definitely not, his not arm. yep. Definitely not faking it, so He's a tough kid. He'll get back. Ba he'll get back back there. Yeah, he'll. <laughs> so we're set. Two one. Called strike. Called strike. Get a pitch, and the when you're down in the the count. Yep, and little times like that for pitchers can always kind of maybe stall some momentum, possibly that the pitchers create. And as Parker Newby gets strikeout. Strikeout. Is that the first one for OHS? I believe so. Uh, yep, I believe that's a first strikeout for Parker Newby, and uh, they get the order Pretty to go quickly. down one, two, three. Has two five balls to the outfield and one strikeout by Parker Newby. So we'll bring the uh, bottom half of the fourth inning to you uh, right after this. Third Region Sports Network. Leading off the uh, fourth inning will be Lathan Lamar. He's probably going to look to drive something again. Last ball was hit hard, just had a good play by the first baseman on it. So the Lathan steps in with definitely power to. It's in his bat. First pitch, he's going to foul it back. Start that was the, a breaking ball. Start the fourth inning for the Hornets. PP said it was possibly a breaking ball. I didn't see the pitch. As like he kind of has a unhonesty check swing. Falls behind in the count 0 2. Now it's tough. You really got to watch your pitches and battle hard. Just a little inside. Yeah, O two, O two breaking ball almost fell in there in the strike zone. It's just, just on the inside part of the plate. One two is we're still tied here in the bottom half of the fourth. Zero zero. One two is gonna be another breaking ball. That one misses up this time. So, back to back breaking balls. Has he seen a lot this? He has. Bat. Definitely scary too. You always want to try and foul and poke those off. Two two. Lathan swings one in the dirt. Throw over down to first base. And records a strikeout, so As that'll a, be the second strikeout. I think he for the saw Hornets. one fastball that I bet. I don't think he did. I think he saw one. That one did he fouled he? back. I okay. think it was a fastball. So pitcher definitely showing respect to Lathan Lamar, as he knows that he could definitely do some damage. And when the uh, score is zero zero, you know every run's crucial. So, I mean, one pitch, one bad pitch could be over the wall, mm. and that could be the deciding factor for the game. So. First pitch, Corey X, and he likes it, and he drives it down right field line, but that's too much. He nice was just to a, keep that one just a little bit too. late, yep. Well, that had double, possibly triple written all it's over. It's a good one to run on in that corner, too. 
if it gets down in there. It's a long way for a right fielder to run. Yep. And the 0-1. Uh, another breaking ball. Cold strike, nice pitch by Hare. He has thrown up a lot of breaking balls this game. The 0-2, another, uh, another breaking, breaking ball in the dirt. Ball. Gets another one. So, you know, the pitcher's doing a lot of work here, but the catcher definitely. Catcher's definitely working. Working hard, too. And um, Blakely's a good catcher. I played Legion. He's, so a, that, yeah. he's a solid catcher. So good job by him, too. And he's you played know. with Griffin a while. They know each other. And after back-to-back -back strikeouts for the Hornets, that's going to bring in number 23, Andrew yeah. Hagman. Definitely has some power, too. Yes. If he, gets, if he gets a hold of one. Me and Tyler have talked about this before. Is that you just got that farmer's man power. I mean, he... With all respect to him. And, and he hits the ball hard. Yep. Takes the ball where it's pitched. Finds himself on, finds himself on first base. This ball does it right between the first and second baseman. That's a good base hit. So we'll see if the Hornets can take advantage with a runner on with two outs. As we've had base runners almost all night long and just can't seem for either team to find that way to push one across. That's As Bloom lifts trouble. one in to center field and Humphrey can't make the play. I believe that was Humphrey on in center field. That's a tough play to make too. I'm not really sure, though. It looked like he was kind of wanting to dive that entire... Uh, yeah, he kind of brought his glove yeah. down like he was ready to dive. Yeah. Maybe if he had ran in hard, he could have yeah, made like the play. Yeah, a hard sprint in. You don't have to make the diving play. But either way, it works out good for the Hornets as they have runners on first and second as Parker Newby steps in at a base good hit his first at bat and good laced hit. it right up the middle. So. That'd be big again. If he does that again, he's definitely scoring one. And one run in a game like this is equivalent to maybe like three or four runs. It's big. With how that might feel for a pitcher. Parker's probably looking something inside there, ahead in the count, something he can drive. So he looks at the outside fastball. The one one to newbie. I'm breaking ball. So we're gonna miss another ball in the dirt. As that pitch has been there this inning for it has Griffin worked for the low curveball. Seems to be full on the Hornets this entire inning as he's picked up two strikeouts on that exact pitch and he finds a strike to bring the count one two on newbie. It's a hard pitch to hit too because it looks like it's coming right down the middle and then it'll just drop. Oh, I know and I I know definitely from the wrong end of it. I've swung at a lot of those. So. In the stands and us talking, it's easy to say, man, yeah. why'd you swing at that? But, but down there, there it's, down it's there, it's difficult. A, yeah, it's a completely different story With down there. It's a good pitcher, too. It's, it's hard to even read it sometimes. 1-2 with two outs to Newby. Called strike three, so Griffin Harris is going to strike out the side. He's going to pick up three strikeouts. Leaves uh, Hornets leave two on as we're rolling right along, and we'll be back bringing you the fifth inning. Third Region Sports Network. And we are back at Tommy Count Field. As, as Parker Newby is getting them some warm-up pitches. 
kind of. And uh, the Hornets seem to be set, almost ready to go. As we still got a 0 0 ball game here at Tommy County Field. As runs have been hard to come by for both teams. And hits as well. It's been a good pitcher's game. A lot, yeah, a lot of there's been a lot of balls put in play. I think there's only been four strikeouts and only one right until that last half of the inning for the Hornets. Balls have definitely been hit everywhere around the field, but just no runs to show for as we got zeros all the way across the, the scoreboard on both sides. Total of six hits in the game so far. As Hare and Newby have both pitched well. Uh, ball a little outside. And the 1-0. Bell tip. It's a dangerous pitch inside as well. I know. Yeah. But if you can get it past them, it's, uh, it's hard to hit if you're not ready for it. And one of those might have been like, that was so perfect he wasn't even ready for it. Some yeah. of those can catch you by surprise. Now he's trying to work inside again. Keep the hitter but guessing. It definitely has a batter that is, has a lead in his favor. Most of the time you can expect uh, maybe a fastball. Maybe not right down the middle, but just a chance to get yourself back in to the count. So a ball that was lifted right into uh, left center. Thought maybe that was going to fall in for a base hit, but Bloom, Bloom covers ground very well. Shades Balls right hit to hard as well. Yeah, it was it was hit hard. But uh, he got a good read, got a good angle, and ran to the ball. Yeah, definitely, quickly, quickly. Definitely as a left fielder with a left-handed batter, you can kind of get always want to shade over because yep. most lefties that tend to want to pull their ball as well. Yeah, and that ball's going to cut just enough. And that time it did exactly that as um, Parker records another out. Yeah, as a lefty, I always uh, would pull balls a lot more than I would take them opposite field. Oh, well, you're not the only lefty. But that's <laughs> the uh, a lot of lefties. That's are that the trend. Way. Yeah, that's what everybody does. Is the ball that's hit to Cole Dixon kind of fumbles the ball a little bit in his glove, but He's maintains. Makes the play. Yep, maintains the ball and makes the play. So a routine ground ball made not so routine, but um, Cole Dixon does Found his job, way. keeps his composure, and throws him out on. Now at first, so again, another quick two outs. Working quick in innings, and that's good for pitchers. It helps. It is helps with uh, momentum. Keeps the pitch count low too. It does it does go longer, deeper in games. And I mean, I I don't want to jinx Parker by no means, but he's cruising right through this game. I mean, you can definitely sneak out a lot of innings here. Without even having to use the bullpen, because we got a long week ahead for the Hornets as they've they got do games. Have a long week. Maybe up one. To yep. What district tournament? District tournament next week. They have two more games this week they, as well. I'm hearing they play. Um, I can't remember who they play tomorrow. Is it Davis well, County? Davis County tomorrow, and they play Crawford County. Crawford on County Friday. on Friday. Yes. And they start and possibly the next Grayson week County sometime this week. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at a schedule, but. Definitely a lot of they, games they that do are have scheduled. A lot of games this week. So it's definitely, yeah, it's good for uh, Park and Ubi to work. You want to save pitchers? Here. You want to save pitchers? Yeah, as much as you can. As a ball that's lifted well, foul. That ball was smoked. <laughs> as that ball got out of here in a hurry, that was lifted was, well, foul. Ball was hit hard. And that was a. Long strike. <laughs> we got a lot. Whatever you got to do. Yep. 2-2. Two, two. Hits it. Well. <laughs> hmm. I, I, it, yeah. Yeah, you definitely wanna, don't want to bring that pitch back in after seeing the result of it. There's a ball that might have been one of the uh, highest, longest balls I've seen hit in this ballpark. Goes just foul. Parker comes back with the next pitch inside and hits him right in the foot. So that brings in Braxton Francis. He had a uh, double his last at bat. 
and he's going to lift one out. in to right field. Cameron that's White that's goes back. Trouble. He looks up and that gone. Ball. That ball was hit up. So, long and far. So, like I said, I almost gave up a home run to Braxton French he can, last year. He can get power behind it. And that was right down the line. That one, the, the, the worst home run I've ever gave up was a home run against Muhlenberg County, and a kid hit the scoreboard. That now you don't hit. see you don't see many of those home runs hit on this field in that area. So um, I have, however, seen Dakota Duel on OHS hit one off of this scoreboard. Yes, I mean that's that's probably the longest home run I've seen. Now I'm sure I'm not sure who would but you don't hit see, one farther than that. You don't see the building get hit much either, and that's where that one landed. Chance Hamilton probably. I'm sure he. Yeah. He lifted a couple, <laughs> possibly a dead few. center. You never know. I, yeah. I wasn't around to watch a whole lot of baseball then. But either way, Braxton French lifts a home run into uh, right center field. Right in between, it looked like the hitting facility out there and the wall. So that brings um, the first run to the plate for both sides. As Parker finds himself with a 1 1 count, the three hole hitter tonight for the Red Devils. And 1 1 is fouled down third baseline. Now, that's definitely nothing if you're Parker to hang your head about. You know, you still have, you still have um, nine outs to give. Definitely doesn't feel good here coming into fifth inning, and his runs have definitely been hard to come by as he strikes out the batter right after the home run. So, good adjustment by Parker. He gets a nice breaking ball. So, we'll see what these Hornets can do, finding themselves down 2 0. Uh, we'll bring the bottom half of the fifth to you right after this. This is Third Region Sports Network. <laughs> back from Tommy County Field as we almost uh, went five innings full with no runs scored, but that streak was breaking by uh, Braxton French, uh, local kid, raised here in Hancock County, moved to Owensboro to go to high school and play baseball for the Red Devils, and uh, he gets a two-run home run, right center, right between the uh, building and the wall, so as Parker has worked hard all night long and made some good pitches and definitely let his defense work behind him, he just kind of left that ball up just enough. And Par or, uh, Braxton French took advantage of it and it sent it over the wall. So Parker also did a good job getting himself back out of that inning too. Because as, that, yes, as that, a pitcher, it's hard yeah, to that's, see one. That's a good point. And he comes back, he comes and back with an impressive strikeout. And then continuing to pitch well, it's, it's difficult. Especially when you're, you know your team isn't scoring runs. Yeah. Because, I mean, like I said, one run can seem like a lot. Two runs in this part of the game is definitely manageable to, you know, come back, no doubt. But it definitely is. Run soon, yeah. though, to yeah. build some confidence yeah. on the bats and stuff like that. And it's a great position as um, the Hornets are going to have 9 1 2 in the lineup as Cole Dixon, the seventh grader, steps into the plate. As we got a new um, pitcher on the mound for the Red Devils. A lefty. As Cole Dixon takes a second pitch, swings right through it. As 
Trace Grinner is uh, doing the pitching for the Red Devils. And, and a ball, base hit that's lifted r <laughs> right into right shallow, there. yeah, right into shallow right field. I think your right fielder might have been playing a little too deep. Looks like that's Braxton. Yep, that's Braxton French out there in right field. And Good hitting though to yep. put one right up in there. <laughs> Cole Dixon just has enough to find a hole as the second baseman tried to shade over and make the play. It was just out of his reach. So the Hornets have a leadoff man on. It's always and good the, to get uh, your leadoff yep. man, too. In the bottom half of the fifth. Give your team an opportunity to get a run in here, which is what the Hornets need right now. And Daner comes up swinging first pitch and fouls it back. They have been aggressive on the bats. So all yeah, game, they have. All game. Definitely not wasting at bats, not wasting pitches is what it seemed to be the trend tonight for the Hornets. They've jumped out early. I mean, also, you could say that was the case for the Red Devils, too, because yep. Parker has started a 0-1 on a lot of batters. As Tanner laces one in to left field, might have burned the left fielder, and he does. Left fielder falls to his knees and uh, maybe slipped over there in the outfield. And this might score one. Mo Mike Mosby is going to send home Cole Dixon in. Cole, Cole, <laughs> Cole Dixon is going to score from first base. So good job by Tanner Singleton as he good burns base running too. Yep. Good job all around by coaching and the hitting and the running by Cole Dixon. Smart to hold Tanner at second, too, especially with no outs. You don't want to get your first one there on third. Definitely. You don't, yeah, there's no reason to take your bat out of the hands in this part of the lineup. Especially, yeah. And Coming to your second hitter, the meteor lineup here. Exactly. With the runner still in scoring position. It's a smart call. So taking nothing away from Tanner Singleton, that ball was hit hard. That ball was the hit left hard. fielder didn't take the best of routes, and it went right over his head. So either way, Tanner Singleton finds himself with a base hit and a double. Big run that they needed. That right a huge there too. run. So the Hornets respond after the two-run home run by Braxton French. Tanner Singleton on second, and they're coming out aggressive. there again, again. Coming out aggressive. Jacob Boy swings that first. I'm pretty sure he's swinging first pitch he all has night. Every every at bat. So two to one here in the uh, top half of the top half of the fifth, or bottom. I'm sorry, bottom half of the fifth. Uh, and again, no. that seems like what's happened all night long. Jacob White fellows that first pitch off and finds himself 0-2. Finds himself 0-2. I think he's been in every bat so far. And then he'll battle. Last time he and got that, it to a full count. Yeah, yeah, he got it to a full count last time. I think so. he did the first at bat too. He probably did. I'm not sure. I know he had a... And he yeah. takes a drip. Did his job. Moved the runner over. Yeah, good job by... Jacob White is the second baseman, kind of fielded that ball and threw it a little bit lazily. He took that's it. a word. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but. Eh, we'll say this. Second Wait. baseman didn't have any. Uh, Oomph. Oomph. <laughs> yeah, that's a better word. <laughs> on the ball there. So the Hornets have one out in the bottom half of the fifth as they've already got one back. That was that. a good good hit by Jacob, though, yeah. to move your runner with from second to third with no outs as well. And an 0-2 count. Yeah. Always doing your job. It's team sport. As uh, Cameron White swings first pitch. Straight back. Swings right through it. I'm not sure if that hit the catcher or that hit, hit the somebody. <laughs> hit hit somebody. someone. <laughs> nobody seems to, yeah, that, nobody seems to be uh, too concerned. Yeah, shaking up too much. So, the tie and run on third base. Good job to lay off. Good <laughs> it's job Cameron, to lay yep. off As uh, Cameron White does all he can to hold back on that breaking ball. The Hornets have been chasing a few breaking balls uh, low in the mm -hmm. yeah low, low in the zone. Yeah, they have. And sometimes well out of the zone. Mm -hmm. A couple of them been in the dirt. Another low pitch. Which props to one's worst pitchers too. They're keeping the ball low. Nothing you can really drive hard. Which has a as a pitcher, your coaches always tell you to keep it low in the zone. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you're going to miss, miss low. Miss low. As Cameron White swings right through that pitch. So the Hornets have definitely found themselves in a situation to tie this game after uh, both sides' runs were looking very, very slim. I hear it does a lot. As we're tied at zeros. And Cameron White is going to. Uh, Go back to the dugout on strike three, swung right through it. And he swung right like he through all those pitches. That yeah, he, he definitely he chased like that a little bit. Out in front yeah, almost. He was, like yeah. he was leaning towards it. Definitely. Yep. So might have not been seeing the ball well all that much or 
could be a speed change too from um, the first definitely, pitcher. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah. Always an pitcher. adjustment. Yeah. And seeing one that goes from right to left-handed, it's always different. Slayton lays off the first pitch. It's a strike. Yeah. And I've been impressed by Clay Herndon tonight. Yeah. He has he has called a good game. He's definitely st stuck He's to his strike zone. Kept it consistent. Kept it consistent. As so think it's down 0-2. Now this is a big at bat, big pitch. With two outs for both and a teams. runner on third yeah, as well. For, for both teams. As a tying run awaits on third base. And they're just a pass ball or anything away from scoring this run. And Latham Lamar's going to fight off the 0-2. Wow. As that was a, a hop that... Sunday hop, isn't Yeah. It? Every infielder loves to see that type of hop, Definitely. especially on a first first baseman because yeah. you have plenty of time. You have all the time in the world. As the pitcher was coming over to take first take base. First base, but I think he might have hit his glove with his knee once he got it in. And it was that's what it was weird. It out. I'm I not sure know. what. Yeah, that could have been I'm what happened. Sure. That's what I. That's what I saw. Like while he was running, I guess his glove. So his yeah, knee just to kind of explain what just happened. Out. Yeah, a ball that was hit right to the first baseman. It was chopped. Went high up in the air and. First baseman had the ball in his glove and somehow hit his knee or something and bounced away, and that scores the uh, tying run. So now we're tied 2-2 here. Tied 2-2. As I pick off to first. Now definitely as this game progresses on, that might be the play to remember. Yeah. As it seems like the Hornets are warming up another pitcher. Looks like Tanner Singleton. Tanner Singleton, Singleton yep. The L1, the Corey. Fell back. As pitchers all night long have started a ahead. Definitely helps with pitching pitch count, definitely pushes this game along. And it definitely helps with your defense because you know if you have a lot of pitchers that throw a lot of full counts, yeah. start behind in the counts. It kind of, you know, start. it lets your defense set back a little bit because you're just looking for a strike. This way the uh, keeps your defense on the toes. Mm -hmm. Always keeps them active. Everyone's usually doing something with the balls in play yep. and stuff. So the one-two. Pitch low, called ball. We got twos across the board here. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. And the score. And it's 2-2. Two, two. With a runner on first, Latham Moore gets his lead. 2-2 two, two pitch to Corey Axton. Ball low. So if you're Latham here and you know that the... The pitcher's going home. You're usually going to get a takeoff here with yep. the two outs and a full count. For sure. Latham will definitely be off on the pitch. Has to make sure he goes to Has the plate. Has to make sure. Especially <laughs> with the lefty. It's hard. And there he goes. That's what he does. Fouls off. So good job by Corey. May see a pickoff here from the pitcher this time as well. That's always, yeah. That's something you could. Especially after the foul ball. For sure. But, I mean, that's a lot for a pitcher to process, you know. I yeah. mean, we can call it now, but it'll be inter interesting to see if he definitely takes a chance. And he does. I mean, he might have done that a little too fast. Yeah, that was. I mean, he didn't even really come set. Yeah. So he could have definitely came set and took his time going to the plate and then just pick over there real quick. But, I mean, you called it. And he the definitely full count. has a difference. Walked him. So we got runners on uh, first and second. You can definitely see a difference if you're a base runner that you want to notice with the pitcher's uh, stretch. Whenever he uh, goes to the plate, he's going to bring his leg up slower yep. than whenever he's picking off. Trent Thomas is uh be the courtesy runner. As Corey Exxon is going to go back to the dugout and get his gear get his on. gear on. Get ready to catch. Yep. Steps Brings in number 23. Andrew Hagman. Andrew Hagman. Is he two for two or one for two? Uh, he takes the first pitch, hits right to the second baseman, and the uh, second baseman the makes the out. The but the play that we might be remembering all night long is that play. In the first base. Yep.
that Latham Lord chopped to the first baseman to give uh, the Hornets the tie. So we're tied at 2-2. We're going to start the uh, top half of the sixth when we come back. This is third region sports network. Field. And me and BP, we were just talking about our summer job uh, as we both work at the city of Lisport. First day of work today was pretty hot. Of course, the first day we'd work would be one of the hottest days on record for May 14th. And we're about set. Start sixth inning. As Calder Higgs steps into the plate. But cleanup. Four, five, and six is who Parky will Parker will see and Parky. Who Parky will see. <laughs> As first pitch. That's high. Yeah, that is really high. Right field. Cameron White. It's hard ball to see, too, especially with those clouds. Cameron White makes the play. <laughs> Definitely didn't make it easy, but <laughs> that's okay because, I mean, it goes down as out in the record books. And with a ball that's hit that high, it's and probably it got a lot of it movement. Moves too. Yeah, definitely has a lot of movement on it. And that seemed to be the case there. As uh, Isaac yeah, Humphrey. makes the play. Yep, makes the play. So good job by Parker. One pitch, one out. As Isaac Humphrey. As Isaac Humphrey steps in, first pitch and breaking ball. Ahead. He's done that first pitch breaking ball for a strike. Pretty but pretty much every yeah. at bat he has this game. I mean, I'm I've been impressed with all the pitching tonight. I have too. Mm, as we and say uh, that, he, <laughs> he was one funny. slip there right there. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> funny how that works. And I'm not sure if you could see that on the camera or not, but uh no, Parker New <laughs> Parker knew. <laughs> Parker knew. Just hit the backstop. Everybody just looked at it. And I'm not even sure. Corey Axon even really made an attempt to catch it without a runner on base. As <laughs> we so just said, how impressed we were with the, the pitching. One definitely uh, snuck away from him there. You gotta hit the bull every now. But and yeah, then. if you're gonna hit the bull, definitely hit the bull with no one on. Another ball hit hard. Fouled back two two with the one out. But as one of those pitches, <laughs> most of the time all you can do is just laugh at it, you know. I mean, especially with high school, I mean, it happen, It can happen in the majors. You just got to yeah. kind of laugh at yourself. Shake it off and keep pitching. Yep. As he gets to a full as count we, yep. here. Look at a full count. Three, two. Uh, <laughs> and the three two will be fouled out of play. I'm not sure if the dugout is on all those pitches. There's been a lot of foul balls. Wait, when we got some movement in the dugout now. So those boys will definitely have some fun finding those foul balls. Yeah, Pulling down out. that hill over there. Full count. Hit uh, Jacob White, and it's going to find itself in the left field. Third base is a hard position to field, too. That was definitely a base hit. That was a Third base is a hard position, yeah. especially you're that was uh, hit so hard. close to the plate. 
balls yeah. are hit hard at you. You gotta as have quick to, reactions. Yeah, as we're in the press box trying to figure out what to score that. I would definitely have to give that a base hit. I would as well. But that's a big base runner over there on first. As Duel steps into the plate, and there's a big hole. There is a big hole between uh, first base and second base. Yeah. And playing against uh, Dakota Duel. There goes Cole, telling him to scoot over. Cole doing a good job as a shortstop, telling to, telling Dobb to move over. Yeah, filling that hole. I mean, he could definitely move over a little bit more. Yeah, you can just have Cole stop. cover second exactly. with the stolen base as well. Especially knowing the hitter that he's going to pull the ball more times than not. Exactly. You definitely want to fill that gap right there. Because a ball that's hit hard by Dakota Duel, you can definitely have a chance to get double play if it's hit. And there it is. There it it's is. a right, right in the hole. Dobb shades over, makes the play. He fills it, throws it. Not in time. So so he makes the play on second base, but doesn't have enough time to throw to the first baseman. Yep. It is good that he got to it, though, because it saves the runner from moving to third if that ball gets past him. Exactly. But just like we called it, um, that, Dakota Duel, straight pull hitter, and he hit it right to where Dylan O'Brien was not playing. And that'll be the end of the day for Parker Newby. So Parker threw well. Um, kind of struggled here in the last couple innings. Definitely gave up that um, two-run home run. But uh, we're going to have a new pitcher on the mound, and we'll Seems tell like you Jacob all about White. it. Yep, Jacob White will be doing the pitching for the Hornets. So we'll take a break, and uh, we'll be right back. This is the Region Sports Network. field with uh, one out and the Red Devils have runners on first and second as number 14 Jacob White is going to relieve Parker Newby for the pitching tonight. Parker pitched well just like we said right before we went to break. Just kind of struggled here in the last couple batters. Had a ground ball that was hit by Duel. Definitely could have picked up an out but the second baseman um, Dylan O'Brien wasn't there to make the play. So instead of uh, having two outs with a runner only on second, we have runners on first and second with only one out. And bringing in a new pitcher as well. And yep, Jacob White doing the pitching. So first pitch ball up and in. Hornets really need to work their way out of this inning. McAllister. One oh. Inside. Two balls and no strikes. One out. Red Devils threatening here in the top half of the sixth. Good pitch by Jacob White on the right at the knees. It looked like on the outer half of the plate. Good Clay's job. Clay's called that all night yep, as well. Yeah. Clay is definitely like that outside pitch right there on the corner. Definitely. Nothing too far out. So good job by him. As Jacob White's gonna check the runner on second. Check on, yep. Check on Humphrey over there on second base. I'm questioning whether um, Mosby should have put Lathan on third and Cameron White playing first. I don't know much of positions um, with this team. I know Cameron typically will, can play first because he did most of last year. And the two one is fouled out of play. Man. It was a 
Yeah, there's a group of girls over there. Some of them seem to kind of get out of the way, but one just kind of sat there, <laughs> almost <laughs> nailed her right in the back of the head. But everybody seems to be okay over there, so that's definitely good to see. I'll tell you what, I was at a baseball game over the spring at Cliff Hagen Stadium, and the ball that was hit right into the sun. I was sitting in the stands, hit right into the sun. Everybody around me moved away, ran. I was just there with my head down, and luckily it fell right to my left and I didn't get hit, so I definitely know how she felt as uh, <laughs> Jacob White just misses the outside corner. Brings the count full with one out, two runners on here in the top half this of the sixth. This is a big out to get yeah. to. This is you a big don't pitch. Feel bases. And that's going to be a base hit into left field. If Bloom can get the ball in quick, we might have a play at the plate. And Lock he, it up. He, yep. Good job by Andrew Bloom. Get the ball in quickly, yes. <laughs> I actually saw him make that exact play and get the runner out at home, no, I guess two games ago when I was here watching. I don't think I, w I don't think I was at that at that game. As Coach Mosby is going to go out to the home plate umpire, and we're going to have some defensive Cody changes. Cody move in for Dylan O'Brien on second. Yep. So it looks like what's going to happen. Pitching will stay the same. Yeah. But definitely some more experience in Cody Axon on the second in a tight situation. As I'm not sure how we would want to play the infield here. Um, I would play I see corners an in yeah, and I, the middle infield try and play for a double play. I could definitely see both sides of the argument. Um, but it looks like we might have infield in. So ball hit anywhere, anywhere close up the, the middle is yeah, it's two like runs scored. Two runs definitely. That's why you always want to push those back so they can maybe make that double play yep. and get you out of the inning with no runs. But the Hornets might be doing a little gambling here as they have the infield in. With one out. Still tied 2-2 here in the top half of the sixth. This first pitch is hit into the air and foul. As if he lines that one out and straightens it out just a bit, that's a grand slam. And that last game I covered against uh, Heritage Hills, that's the uh, death blow that Heritage Hills pulled in the 10th inning as they hit a grand slam over the left field wall and definitely sucked the air out of the Hornet dugout. And even up here in the press box, we didn't know what to say. As Jacob White with 0-2 finishes away. In this situation, you want a ball on the ground in the infield because anything in the air is a definite run. And not just in the off. infield. For the Hornets, you want it right at one of the the players because if they hit it at the middle I mean there's nobody there to cover as a ball that's hit deep. into center Tanner comes all the way over makes the catch but that's going to be deep enough to score I mean, that's going to get a run in off the sack fly so if you could see that on the camera Tanner was playing almost in a yeah, shift almost kinda. in right field to defend the right handed batter or the left handed batter I'm sorry figuring that he was going to uh, pull the baseball but he had to shade all the way over to his right. And he makes the catch, so good play by Tanner, but that was definitely deep enough to uh, make a sacrifice fly. So the Red Devils have another lead here in the sixth as they have also answered back with one of their own after the two-run home run by Braxton French and the Hornets tied this game up in the same part of the inning. But now the Red Devils take the lead again. Runners on first and second. Three to two. Ball out. It's been a tough inning for the Hornets. Yeah, it, it definitely has. I mean, there's only been one run across, but definitely some coaching decisions, some defensive plays that could have been made to possibly already be out of this inning that uh, was not made. But, again, that's easy for us to say up here. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's... We're not in this situation. Exactly. It's different when you're down in the dugout. Easier said than done. Definitely. I mean, it's easy to break things down after, after the fact. But it's definitely possible for Dylan O'Brien to make that play, and we would have been out of the inning. But... 
We got runners on, and that's going to be a fly ball right into the infield, shallow right field. Cody Axon shades over, makes the catch. So that'll be the end of the inning as we go to the bottom Lucky half to of the sixth. Lucky to get out of that inning with a yeah. run, too, especially with, with the bases loaded. Exactly. With the way that inning felt, it should have been a lot worse than one inning, or one run, <laughs> one, one run in the definitely. inning. So, uh, I definitely agree. Yeah. So that's all that the uh, top of the six has. So we'll be back with the bottom half. This is Third Region Sports Network. Count field, three to two. Red Devils lead over the Hornets. As they scored one run in the top half of the sixth, and uh, for the Hornets, Andrew Bloom is going to step up, and we're going to have seven, eight, nine. So if the uh, seven, eight, nine batters can find some ways on, we'll have the top half of the order. But if they can't, we'll have the top half for the seventh inning. So. Definitely a lot of baseball to be played. Definitely. With one run, this game is far from over. And and runs that were hard to come by in the first innings. Definitely been scored here in the last couple. So we'll see if that can be the trend that carries on over. And then Andrew Bloom steps into the plate, takes the first pitch ball. It's a little outside. Three two lead. The one oh ball out. The two oh the ball that's, that's hit a into a right center field. Center fielder comes over and makes a play. Did he make it? it? Yeah. He caught it. That was a good catch. That was a comfort. I thought maybe he had a... I thought he, I thought he might have got burnt on it. Yeah, I did too. With the way he took his route, it didn't yeah. look like he, that was the easiest way to make that play. But Somehow he makes it. Most of the time, athleticism will win. So that's a defi definitely what um, Isaac Comfrey did there. That's a ball that was smoked by Andrew Bloom. That, ball, that hit would have been big for the Hornets as well. So steps in number thirty, Parker Newby, looks at first pitch ball, and he uh, his first at bat hit one right up the middle. Looks last at the pitch. AP, he was a victim of a strikeout on that. I couldn't remember what he did low, last at bat. That low curve ball. Yep, I believe you're right. With one out, the one one. Called strike. And that's and that's two he's looked at. Yep. So now you definitely want to battle, poke anything close away, especially after seeing two go by. Mm hmm One two. So wing and a miss, strike three. Two outs. Right here for the Red Devils steps in. Cole Dixon. Nine hole. First pitch to Dixon. A ball out is a way to watch. Yep. Every at bat matters now. Yep. You only got four more outs to give. Mm -hmm. So, base runners are crucial at this point. 
one oh called strike on the outer half. One ball, one strike. Ball two. Went to be just a little bit low. As another. Three one. Ball that's hit to the shortstop. Shortstop gets around it, throws it, and he's out. And that's a tough play to make too, especially yep. when you're coming towards the plate mm -hmm. that way and Definitely. throwing across your body back I thought maybe first. he kind of threw that over the first I baseman. I threw it a little high as First well. baseman is tall. He is pretty tall. Yeah. So height definitely uh, <laughs> one on that pit or on that play. So good job by the Red Devils. So we're going to go to the seventh inning. Horn is down one. This is third region sports network. about set start the seventh inning here at Tommy Count Field as we are going to play an entire seventh inning as Hornets trail three to two it's important for the Hornets to get out of this inning with no run scored as it'd be nice for the Hornets to go into the go into the dugout to only pull out uh, one run to tie and two runs to win the game so Big as, inning here for the yep. Hornets. As Jacob White's going to see one, two, three in the Red Devils order. Definitely don't want to give up another run. Yeah. If you give up another run, definitely not impossible to come back from because it's not even going to be two easy. runs. But, man, with the way this game's been going, it won't be an easy task. So, one, two, three for the Red Devils. That's this part of the order has hit the ball well all night long. The first pitch, fly ball hit to Cole Dixon. Dixon shades over and makes the play. So good job by the shortstop to good play. take over the field. First pitch, first out. So good job by the Hornets and Jake White. Steps in, Braxton French is has to bat. He had a two-run home run in right center. One pitch, one out. Always good to see as well. Yep. Definitely. As we're going to see the top part of this Red Devil lineup, we're also going to see the top half of the Hornets as well. Jacob White also not wanting to give Braxton French anything he can put some power behind. Exactly. At this point, you kind of just want like a rollover ground ball, a second baseman, or something weak to sneak out a second out here mm -hmm. from a hard hitting Braxton French. Second pitch. Down and in. Two balls, no strikes. One out here in the top half of the seven for the Red Devils. And there's a rollover ground ball, just like I said, to the second baseman with Braxton Ooh, Speed. Davis. Well, Braxton Speed, he made quick. that play a little close, but definitely got him out by one and a half steps, I'd say. So good job, uh, Cody. And Lathan there to make the play. Six, 
So brings in Nick Belcher. With two outs. The big out right here. Yep. Get this out. And go in and with some momentum too as well. With exactly. The one, two, three. If, yeah, if you get one, two, three out, down one, two, three, that, that yeah, that's definitely some momentum that can be carried into this lineup. That is gonna see one, two, three themselves. So before we get talk uh start talking about that, we definitely need one more out of here. So um, as this count starts two oh. Yep, two oh. Two outs. Jacob needing to find a strike here. Ball out and away. <laughs> I said it again, didn't I, Tommy? Out and away. That don't make any sense. <laughs> Ball low and away. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a T-shirt that says that. Ball yeah. out and away. <laughs> As the uh, Prio pitch is called strike. Three one with two outs. Big pitch here by Jacob White. Mm. Walked him. <laughs> I remember that one. So the Red Devils have one aboard here in the seventh with two outs. Jacob White delivers foul ball. Not sure I remember what he did last at bat. I can't I remember he, either. Didn't he drive one deep in the outfield possibly to Cameron White? Was it the one that was high? Was it? I can't remember. I can't quite remember either, but I think that's who that was. That's what sometimes I need to keep a scorecard up here, but talking and Writing things, man, I'm not good with multitasking, so that might be a lot to ask for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the high fly ball in the think, right yeah, field. Yeah, I think you're right. That's the old one, is ball low and away. 1-1. One, one. Jacob White's going to check on the runner. Definitely worried about not giving up another base, putting a runner in scoring position here. They're gonna. Mm, they're not gonna make that. Throw almost look like a. Good job, almost look like a uh, delayed steal for the Red Devils. Yeah. And they find a runner in scoring position. So just like you said, that's. Also, uh, don't want to take the take the chance of throwing that ball away. Oh, for sure. Second, yeah, especially in this type of yeah, game. Yeah, that's true, too. With two outs as well. Anything's possible is a ball that is going to be a base hit right over the glove of Lathan Lamar as it was a line drive to hit right over that'll top of him. That'll score a run. And that will score a big insurance run here in the top half of the seventh for the Red Devils. Lathan was just inches away from making that play. And you talk about momentum. That's that's a lot of momentum going into the dugout. Yeah. Coming up with a play like that. But just out of his reach was late on Lamar, so. That's a big swing right there, too. Big, big swing, big hit for Owensboro. Steps in Isaac Humphrey, another kid that can uh, hit well, as that was a cold strike. The old one, up and in. One one is a ball in the dirt. Two balls, one strike, two outs. A runner on first for the Red Devils here in the top half of the seventh. One run already on board. So that's a that is going to be a base hit. That, that's yep. another base hit. Balls 
right into runner shallow will, uh, right center. The runner from first will hold it third there. That's one uh, other big base hit. The Hornets are searching for an out here. Yep. They'll take an out any way they can get it. So steps in to go to duel. Pull, pull, pull. pull. Hopefully oh. we'll make sure we Yo, cover that. Definitely see if the time. Hornets can make an adjustment with what he did the last time. As we, as the moment, still have a hole first base and second Pretty base. Pretty large hole. delivery and that is going to be a ball that is Boy, in play that's trouble. And nobody sees it and that's going to fall in for a uh, base hit and another run and another run that and ball was high that ball too. was high and nobody really knew exactly who was going to make the play yeah, I need to talk more in the field there. Yep. Make sure somebody but it's definitely, definitely Par calls it. Parker can definitely make that play coming it's in. It's easier for him to come in and make that play than the for infielders sure. drop it back. But Parker uh, kind of seemed like he didn't really know where it was at. And Cody already playing almost near second base. He had to come a long way over as well. And, I mean, Lathan Lamar can make that play too, but that's even tougher for Lathan with the I angle he has. Similar to that whenever uh, I was playing second and collided with White Baker in right field. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how anybody could forget that one. So, again, we have the same situation. Runners on the corners. Runners on the corners are two outs. As Onsville Red Devils have played in another insurance run here in the top half of the seventh. They've scored two so far in the seventh inning. As Jacob That's does a, a third to first. Third to first move. That's base runner. Wherever you're at, if you're on first or third, you just get back. In this situation, I also wouldn't probably wouldn't be stealing either. Because you paid well this inning and have the two insurance run, then you don't want to make the third out. Yeah, on it'll a, be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Runners on the corners. Five to two. Jay White delivers. So wing and a miss. The Hornets are going to have one, two, three in the lineup. Bottom of the seventh. For the bottom of the seventh. See if they can tie or win this thing. And there's a runner stealing. Cody comes up to make the catch okay. just in case. <laughs> yeah, cuts the ball off just in case the runner scores. But Freeman definitely probably told him over there on third to no matter what happens, get back. Yeah, definitely. And as a pitcher, too, you're more concerned with the batter and getting yourself out of this inning exactly. than you are with a base runner going from first to second. And the ball gets away from Corey, and we're going to have a play at the plate. No, nope, we're not. Humphrey is going to score easily as the uh, Red Devil lead is going to extend to 6-2. to two. Uh, They've scored three runs here in the seventh. Our runner still on third. Three balls and one strike to the batter. Jacob seems like he's getting frustrated on the mound. He yep. needs to step off and take a take a few breaths. You're still one pitch away from getting out of this inning, and you definitely can't be hanging your head yet because this is a horned offense that is very explosive and can put up some runs in a hurry. As that is going to be a walk, and I believe we might have have we batted around. I'm pretty sure we batted around. We might have batted around a batter ago. No, I started oh. with uh, one hit. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I was wrong. <laughs> As again, we're going to have two outs and runners on corners. We'll take a quick break. This is the Region Sports Network.
Common County Field as Coach McCormick has made his way back to the dugout after talking to Jacob White as we got runners on the corners with two outs. Justin probably came out there just to tell him, you know, don't don't and try to do anything. Ball lifted up, I can't see much. it. Jacob White seems to have it, and he makes a catch. So big out for Jacob White. But you know, Red Devil score three. Not that, easy, but uh, yeah. not impossible. Definitely, they score three, and it's Hornets definitely aren't out of this. Is they're going to have one, two, three to start the bottom half of the seven. They so get themselves going quick, though. Yep, we'll bring it to you here. Just a couple moments. This is Third Region Sports Network. Set to start the bottom half of the seventh. Hornets are going to have one, two, three. And, and at this point, get going yep. quickly. And at this point in the game, all you need is a base runner. Right, that's and a, another one. That's and another a good one. So. confidence swing. Every at bat matters this yep. this inning. You need to be selective with your pitches, mm -hmm. definitely. but definitely not passive. Hit by pitch, walks are your best anything, friend in these moments. Anything you can get, any way to get on. I'm sure that's what Mosby told him down there, oh, too. Definitely. Any way to get on, definitely. Because one it. swing is not going to tie this thing up or nope. win it. Nope. Base runners are critical. 6 2 lead for the Red Devils. Check swing. They're going to appeal, and Ooh, they're going to give him a strike. Man. I couldn't really tell. I couldn't tell either, here, but, but from this angle, it I didn't look like, like it he went like around. He kept that back. But umpire in the field says otherwise. So with the one one chop to the third baseman duel, bare hands it throws a great play. That was a good play. Well it took a nice Sunday hop straight into the bare hand. It's a nice play a by Dakota Duel. That's something you want to see as well. It's a nice easy play. So we got one down here. Still not out of it. I mean still not out of it, no. With one out then these guys can definitely rally around and Find themselves with a couple of men on, put some, put a little bit of pressure on the Red Devils, and especially whenever they they can get the dugout into it too. Exactly, just a little bit of momentum. And Jacob White, foul ball. He smoked that one too. We were just a few feet away from six three ball game as Jacob White almost hits hit home run and hard. just yeah, just foul. I'm up here. I can't tell you exactly how far it was, but either way, it was a foul ball. As Jacob White is in swinging first pitch all night long. Let's see, uh, watches that one low. It's a good delay off. You don't want to swing at anything out of the zone here. Definitely. Because a walk's just as big as a hit is. Exactly. Here. And you just pass it on to the next man up. Trust your teammates to move you around. 1 1. Hit to the shortstop. Another ground ball. And they make the play. So two ground balls to the third baseman and the uh, shortstop. And we have two outs. Now with Cameron White up to bat, here it's really big to make sure you just keep getting base runners on base. That's the first pitch strike. The 0 1. That'll That's be base a hit. Hard hit ball, too. That might be a double. That will be, I'm going to say he'll probably. Ooh. 
Uh, they decide to hold him at first. Hey. Hmm. Um, maybe he didn't get a good round on it. Um, I'm not really uh, sure. I don't know that. I feel like that. That had double written all over it. It was a definite double play. I'm pretty sure the outfielders fell fell the ball on the wall. Yeah, I would definitely would have legged that out for a double. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's not, not like it would have been a huge difference either way. I mean, we still got to have a whole lot of runs. That's base hits. hit. Still getting hits though. Two hits in a row. Two hits in a row. So back to back hits for the Hornets. From the Two pitches in a row too. Yeah. So now you have a uh, Corey so Axon up to bat here. Latham Lamar definitely didn't waste any time on that. <laughs> no, sorry. So steps in Corey Axon to see if we can stretch this game out a little more. Yep. Yeah. And it's going to be hit to the second baseman at and ground ball. It, bobbles it, makes the throw. And no, he didn't catch it. Not make the play. As everybody here at uh, Tommy Count Field thought that game was over, and I'm pretty sure the first baseman did too, is he didn't even look at it. He didn't uh, even was, look at it going into his glove. No, that was up. I think he was just ready to uh, go, and he thought that that was the play to do it. Wow. So we found ourselves bases loaded. Yeah, bases loaded here. As, I mean, I mean, it's uh, not crazy for me to say this, but to, uh, Andrew Heckman definitely has some home run power. Yeah. I mean, it might be a little bit of a long shot, but so, we're one not swing away. Impossible. Yeah. Not impossible. We're one swing away from tying this thing up. As that was just another an almost mental error by the first baseman. Yeah. As the last one he made was... Routine ground ball. ball, yeah, a ground ball that popped right into his glove and it just popped it right back out. And that one, he just I didn't don't think he was watching the ball yeah, at all, didn't watch it go in his glove. And instead of uh, sending us home, we found ourselves with bases loaded with Andrew Hagman. The pitcher goes from the stretch or from the wind up. I'm sorry, he's going from the wind up and a ball that is a low called strike. As the pitcher's going for the windup. That was a horrible call. The 0 1. Inside. Call the ball inside there. 1 1, two outs. Base is loaded. It's a lot of pressure here as a hitter. Andrew well. Hagman represents the tying run at the plate. 1 1. Swing and a miss. I think he was stuck between trying to decide if he wanted to yeah, swing or one. not on that one. That was not an uh, aggressive, even if <laughs> aggressive swing. Yeah, even if he made contact, exactly not that ball wasn't that going ball anywhere. anywhere. No, that, that ball was wasn't going easy, nowhere. Easy ground ball if he made contact on yeah, that one. Definitely. So the Hornets down to their last strike. And so wing and a miss. So the Hornets are going to leave the bases loaded. So that's going to end a strikeout for the Hornets, and uh, that'll be a win for the Owensboro Red Devils. So um, we'll bring you action tomorrow night as uh, the Hornets will take on the Panthers of Davis County. That is all she wrote here tonight at Cliff Hay or uh, I was going to say Cliff Hagen Stadium. Definitely not Cliff Hagen Stadium. This is uh, Tommy Count Field. So uh, we'll bring you a game tomorrow. So that's all from tonight. This is Third Region Sports Network.